I want to show how we can use simulation to help us be more productive in terms of testing out features without adding the actual robot um, present. Uh, so we're going to start with the code and where simulation shows up in the code. Um, and primarily what we're focused on here is um, the constants uh, .java file. Um, and so this is where we specify up here the current um, robot type. So when you're simulating a robot, it needs to be a robot type dot robot simbot. And when you're running on a real robot, whichever real robot you want, you put there. Um, the various types of robots are, are later on in this file. Right now we just have the 2022 preseason um, and the simbot, uh, but we'd certainly add one for 2023 once it exists. So I'm gonna leave this as uh, simbot. Um, and when this is selected as the robot type, um, we will automatically be able to uh, run in simulation and, and everything's just going to work. Um, the way we launch and, and make it run in simulation is you can uh, bring up the command palette or click on the little WPI icon over here. Um, and the command is simulate robot code. So I'm going to hit that. It's going to build. Um, it's going to ask me if I want to run the simulated driver station or the sim GUI. Um, choose sim GUI for what we're working on here. I'll press enter. It'll build and launch the sim GUI here. So here's the sim GUI, um, and it's already been configured, and this configuration is saved in our 3061 lib project um, to map the keyboard to various joysticks. Um, so you can see that joystick zero is mapped to keyboard zero, and joystick one is mapped to keyboard one. Um, that allows us to use keys on the keyboard without having the actual joystick present. Um, so in terms of axis zero, which is, think of it as like the forward and back, um, it's the W, I'm sorry, axis one is the forward and back, and that's the W and S keys. You can see those values change. Axis zero is, is left, right, and that's the A and the D keys. Um, these three little rectangles represent, sorry, four little rec squares represent buttons, and the first button will be Z, and then X, and then C, and then V. Uh, so we can use those to turn on and off various modes. Um, as well. Um, joystick one is mapped to a different set of keys. Um, axis one, I believe, yeah, it's I forward, K backwards, which we don't actually use, but we would use J for rotation left and K for, I'm sorry, L for rotation right or clockwise rather. Um, and again, in terms of the joystick one buttons, um, it is M comma period and slash um, that maps to the four buttons down there. So this allows us to control the robot without actually uh, having one um, or having joysticks. Uh, perhaps later we'll add support to like plug in an Xbox controller to make this a little bit easier. Um, so let's bring up Shuffleboard. So here's Shuffleboard and we can see we've got uh, various things enabled here. Um, and uh, that's, that's like our normal output stuff here. If we're tuning, we've got that tab for everything. Um, let's look at Advantage Scope. Um, because that's what we want to we want to focus on um, as well. Now, in Advantage Scope, when we launch it, we need to go to the file menu and connect to the simulator. So it will connect to the simulator and load all of that up. Um, and we can look at all sorts of information here. Let's just focus on some basic driving stuff here. So I'm going to stick in the odometry tab. Um, you would need to map these things to your to your robot. So these are all under the Advantage Kit real outputs, odometry, and there's two entries here, robot and robot node gyro. Um, robot is the robot using, um, is, is the robot uh, based on the pose estimation. Robot node gyro is the pose we maintain when we don't have um, a gyro, which we don't in, in simulation. We rely upon the swerve module positions to figure out the rotation of the robot. So I'm gonna leave this open um, and I'm gonna actually switch here to the robot simulation and move it to another screen temporarily. Um, so that I can um, watch the Advantage Scope screen as I drive around the robot here. So let's try this out. Um, let me actually let me show you how to enable and stuff first. So um, here's the robot state up here. We can run autonomous, teleoperated, and test. Um, let's actually do autonomous first. So I'm going to move this around a little bit. Um, here's our autonomous selector. I'm going to choose to do a test path um, and update that. And then I'm going to switch back. Um, to the robot simulation, and in a moment here, I'm going to click autonomous, but first I'm going to let you see 
advantage scope so we can actually see what happens when I run autonomous. All right, so I'm clicking on autonomous now. You're gonna see the robot's uh, position move um, to the autonomous start position and then we'll run the autonomous routine. So here we go for that. Uh, the yellow path is the trajectory that is expected from Path Planner. Um, and then you can see where it draws its own path on top of that. Um, so that looks pretty reasonable. Um, I think the uh, the PID for the simulation needs a little bit of tuning in autonomous mode because it drifts there at the end, doesn't quite stop. Uh, but nonetheless, like we can test out all sorts of auto paths without having the robot, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna hit disabled again. Uh, so we'll go back in the disabled state. You can see that this red and green bar here represents when the robot is enabled and disabled. Um, so let's actually drive around some. Um, so I'm gonna click on the tele-operated button in the robot simulation GUI. Um, and now I can actually use my keyboard to drive the robot. So I can drive forward. So I'm doing that. Um, I can rotate and drive. I can also just translate each way as I go back and forth or drive backwards, um, do more rotation. Um, I can even do things related to like zeroing the gyro and stuff. So for example, right now my robot is, is actually facing this way. Um, let's do field relative first actually. So I'm going to switch over here to shuffleboard um, and I'm going to do field relative. Um, I forget which button that is. I think it's this one. There we go. Field relative enabled. So I did that by pressing the C button because that's mapped to the third button on the joystick. So now that field relative is enabled, when I hit the forward button, W key, it moves forward from a field relative perspective. Um, and likewise, when I go left, it goes left from a field relative perspective or right from a field relative's perspective um, or back from a field relative's perspective, regardless of the orientation of the robot. So we can even t uh, test out field relative type information here, which is pretty cool. Um, so we can drive all around and do stuff as well. Um, the last thing I guess I should show you would be that this is also helpful for verifying certain things related to the Swerve modules itself. So I'm, I'm going to add the Swerve tab here. Um, so here's the Swerve tab, and I need to put the Swerve module states into that so I can actually see what direction the wheels are, are turning. Um, and then so as I drive around the field, which you won't be able to see because that's in a separate tab, um, you could always open it in another window. You can actually see here the sort of modules as they rotate around and doing the field relative stuff and whatnot. Um, if I then disable field relative mode and go forward, you can see the sort of modules rearrange themselves for robot relative driving. Um, I can even do uh, X stance, which I believe is this button. Um, so I'm not sure which button it is. There we go, this button, uh, that's Z, which is button one on joystick zero. And you can actually see the orientation of the swerve modules there as I go into X stance. Um, and then as they change, when I go back to normal driving mode, back to X stance, normal driving mode, so on and so forth. Um, so some pretty cool um, testing and debugging features available here in simulation.